We have seen many ingredients for a good class design already. We have seen classes, we have seen inheritance, we have seen abstract classes and right now it's time to look at interfaces. And interfaces, they are a bit like abstract classes, but different. The main difference is that an interface is actually adding a contract for a certain behavior to a class. Whereas an abstract class is really the hierarchic inheritance relationship, as we've seen it before. So classes, they don't extend interfaces, but they implement interfaces. And the great thing is that one class can actually implement multiple interfaces. Interfaces can contain several different types of members. They can contain abstract methods, which is sort of the key ingredient. They can contain constants, and they can also contain some methods with a body. These methods then have to be default or static. Let's have a look at an interface here. So we have a bunch of animals, and actually to these animals we want to add a certain behavior. And in this case we're going to add the behavior of a prey animal and the behavior of a predator animal. Let's start with adding an interface to our project. We'll just right click on um, the folder where we want to create the interface in. And then we are going to select new class, but then instead of class we are going to take the drop down and select interface. Let's have a look. Let's start with um, prey. There we go. And now we have a public interface prey. You can just change it back to a class replacing this word, but right now let's stick with interface. So if you accidentally create a class, that's not a problem. So this prey interface, we want to give it some sort of method or methods even. And let's give it a prey specific method. All the methods we're going to add, they are implicitly public. So we don't need to add the keyword public here. We can, but we don't need to. They're also implicitly abstract, so we don't have to specify their abstract. That's a default. <laughs> oh, that's actually a complicated choice of words. We'll see soon enough why. But it's just abstract by default. So just the return type, the name, the input parameters. That's it. We could also add a constant. We cannot add properties, but we can add constants. And these constants, they are implicitly public, static, and final. So they are a member of the interface. They are final, so you cannot change them constants so to say and this is why you have to set the value the first go so for example int x is so 8 that's super valid you can do that it doesn't really make sense in this case though so let's remove it so two methods run and hide both abstract so any class that is going to be implementing the prey interface will have to override these run and hide method well actually not any class only concrete classes will have to do that so this is a concrete class it extends animal Let's go to add the way how we can actually uh, implement the interface. So we say implements prey. There we go. Then we have a red line. Why? Well, it's because we are implementing prey, but we are not overriding these methods yet. So we need to override the methods run and hide, and then our compiler error will go away. So let's override this method here to get rid of our compile error. So let's first go for overriding the run method. Click void run. And let's just give it some dummy content. And let's do hide now. Override public void hide. There we go. Perfect. So if you go up now, we can see that our compilation error is gone. Yay, that's great. So let's see if we can actually create a prey animal here and add an instance of bird to it. If you remember polymorphism well, we can refer to an object with its parent. We can actually also do this with interfaces. So there is an is a relationship, which makes sense because bird is a prey. But if we do this, we only have access to whatever is in specified in prey because we don't know it's a bird, it can be any other prey animal. So we can only access p.hide and p.run and some default stuff. Um, let's, uh, we have one interface now, but the powerful thing is actually that you can extend multiple interfaces, or I mean implement multiple interfaces. So let's create another one, Predator, and it's an interface as well. And let's give this some sort of methods, I don't know, it would Predators, they catch their prey, so that's just, well, it's default public, but you can add public, it doesn't matter. 
Um, catch is not a valid uh, method name because it's a protected keyword. It's coming from try catch. So let's make this something else. Catch and eat. Yes, so we have one abstract method right now. Catch and eat. But I already mentioned interfaces can also contain methods with a body. Um, they can contain default methods. And default methods you can override them in a child class when you want to be more specific. Actually not child class, but implementing class. And this default method is just what's being called when there's nothing more specific being added in the implementing class. They can also contain um, static methods. And these static methods, they belong to the interface and not to the instance. So just as it is with classes, actually. And I will show you how to implement this later. Let's think of a word. Um, let's go for something example. I'm not really sure what would make sense as a static method right here. So let's just do this example method that just does boring stuff. Right, so we have an interface now with three methods and only one of them is abstract. Let's go back to our bird and add our predator. So we say implements, comma, predator. You can actually specify as many interfaces as you like in here. So there we go. Let's say override and we'll override our catch and eat method here. Great, so our compilation error is gone now. So let's go to our main and we can now instantiate a bird with type predator. We cannot call the predator ones on this one because this one is being specified with reference type prey. It doesn't know it's a predator as well. So we either have to specify a predator, b1 or something, or we could go for reference type bird, and then we have x to all of them. So what should we do? Predator? Nah. Let's just, um, let's just go for bird. I think that's easier, so I can demonstrate both. So here we have bird, and this bird is both a prey and a predator, so we have all the methods. We have catch and eat, we have hide and run, and we even have the default method if we scroll down a bit, I guess. Yes, there it is, byte. So this method, it's a default method. And if you look at predator, it has a body. So we can just call it from our main because it has a body already. So we can just say b.byte and then it will actually call the ones that we specified in predator. We cannot say b.example because it belongs to the interface. So we can say predator.example though, because it's a static method and it belongs to the interface. If we look at bird now, it's implementing both prey and predator. And our predator class, it contains a default method. So this uh, method, it's default, it's called byte. And actually we can copy this and also have the same one in prey. We can specify it a bit. We could say prey biting, for example. And as you can see already, there's one related problem. And this problem is bird, because bird is implementing both. And it's getting the same default method from both interfaces. So which one should it call whenever we call byte on bird? It doesn't know, so we have a compiler error. What we need to do, we need to override this method to get rid of this compiler error. So we'll just say uh, public void byte and specify our own byte method in bird. And as you can see on line five, the compilation error is gone and we're good to go now again. And if we are gonna go to our main methods, we call the method byte, and as you can see, it's actually calling the method byte that's coming from birth, and not one from prey, not one from predator. There it is, solving the problem with our special byte method. And then we get the example, because it says uh, predator.example. All right, that's it on interfaces for now. Please play around with this, have fun, and next up we'll look at functional interfaces, and that's definitely going to be even more fun. See you in the next video.